All right, this is this the, this is the video about the communication, the miscommunication, the styles of communication. Okay, first of all, um, you have to give some allowances for the wide range, and obviously you do, uh, for the wide range of interactions that there are on the net, personal styles. Now, on the other hand, I think you happen to know that I do have a very cool, calm, uh, just the facts demeanor, uh, and. And I do try to focus in on the kind of demeanor, raise the demeanor to the to the highest, most calmest, purely analytic level um, that I can. On the other hand, I do believe in sharing some of the energy of emotion. Uh, and this is kind of an example where it was pointless because it was energy that was generated by a miscommunication. Uh, had you really been saying that stuff about retirees, um, you know, and that we need to get old people to work harder and stuff. And uh, giving them money means they won't work, and it's not like I'm dead, it's after their work. Had you been really saying that, that would have been some genuine emotion that I would feel good about putting in. But it is kind of a part of the problem, and if you have a sentiment that you don't really want to interact that way, fine. Now, to me, it's a little bit just surface level. I mean, until you get to the really extreme levels, well, not really extreme by other people's standards, but until you get to what I consider extreme levels, a certain amount of that is challenging, um, and it's good. Um, well, even at the more extreme levels, you know, I have a tendency if somebody goes, well, because, you know, the will can't work that way because of, you know, determinism, you know, what I heard is... Um, Oh, I have an objection because of deterministic arguments to free will. You know, and if somebody is like, well, I understand your point. Well, let's see, I'm getting, seeming a little bit too off the edge because I'm making it extreme. But if somebody could be really calm and it ends up being patronizing, let me just put it that way. You know, and, uh, and, and it's impossible to get perfect. Somewhere in the middle is this perfect idea that it's neither aggro or patronizing, just honest. But to, to weave that, you have to know the person you're talking to. You have to know their sensibilities and how they take stuff. So with the range of interpretation in a public conversation, in a way, I'm saying it's impossible to weave, other than by luck, that perfect path, okay? But, um, but don't get me wrong. I understand this, and with you, I can definitely narrow down to, to that sort of reaction. And you'd rather have me have some... See, some people wouldn't. I think you'd rather have me say, look, I, it just seems like you don't know what I'm talking about. Like if I had answered this other way, because if you saw in that video, there was this part of like, make another video and actually answer what I said. So I did get that you weren't answering what I said, okay. And maybe that was the reason I should have just said that. But still, it would have been a video like, hey, you're not even getting what I said. You know, why don't you watch the video more closely or whatever, and we would have found it might have taken longer to find out the miscommunication. Maybe not. But... Um, uh, something like that would have had a certain patronizing, you know, like an implicit, aren't you smart enough to understand, you know what I'm saying? And the way I did it, you know, and the one advantage is you might be, hey, well, I don't deserve this, but you didn't feel like, ooh, I'm stupid, you know what I mean? So in a way, it could be better. Um, but, um, you know, it's funny things like this, too, is this particular one, because, you know, whose responsibility? I said Social Security in the U.S., so, like, on the official tally, though I've taken some responsibility, um, it's like, you can look that up. You know, I said that because I know it's different in other countries. I don't know exactly how it is, but I know some things about it. But I said that so you could always wonder, well, this person's in the U.S. Maybe he said Social Security in the U.S. Maybe I should type Social Security in the U.S., you know. Um, so, on the other hand, I'm not trying to call you on that, because that, that does go both ways, you know. And, um, you know, it's a hard call for me. Uh, I'm definitely sorry it struck you the wrong way, but that's one of those half apologies. In a sense, I haven't really said I, I wouldn't do it again. I mean, um, I suppose, actually, I, I wouldn't if I really thought about it, because I did have an inkling you were reacting to something different. And I could have maybe typed Social Security in the UK, or, or you know, and I, I could have come back. Um, yeah, I don't know which one's more efficiency. I'd sort of judge some of this on the efficiency of it rather than the effect on feelings because I think we can all learn to have strong feelings online is one thing we can do. So, um, yeah. Uh, so that's that. We don't have to belabor it. I know you said I didn't want to belabor it. I happen to like this issue. It's better working out with someone like you where we can make, you know, some assumptions of goodwill, you know, which is a better kind of how should we treat each other questions than 
than question than when you don't even know if somebody has goodwill. And you're having this conversation, how should we treat each other? And really, you know, that person hates you. And it's like, we know why I answer question. How should you treat people you hate? You know, it's not what we're talking about when we're talking about having a conversation. Um, of course, it is an interesting subject in its own right. But okay, um, I'll talk to you later. Cheers.